Hi everyone, in this video we'll be discussing Hess's law. Enthalpy change, delta H, is described as the difference in the energy that is absorbed when breaking bonds, that's an endothermic process, and released when forming bonds, which is an exothermic process. The breaking of bonds can also be described as a negative sum of the enthalpy of formation of the reactants. Since formation is a bond forming process, the bond breaking process is equivalent to the negative of the formation process. Because the enthalpy of formation would give us a negative value, the negative of that negative value would become a positive value, which indicates the endothermic nature of this equation. Similarly, the bonds of the products being forming is described as the positive sigma of the delta HF or the enthalpy of formation of the products. This is because the bond formation process for all the products is going to be an exothermic process. Using our first definition, delta H is therefore going to be equal to the enthalpy of formation of the products minus the enthalpy of formation of the reactants. The endothermic process and the exothermic process are highlighted by the blue and the red color. To further illustrate the relationship between delta HF of products and delta HF of reactants, we can consider the following energy cycle. The enthalpy of formation of carbon dioxide from its reactants carbon and oxygen is equal to minus 395 kilojoules. Similarly, the formation of carbon monoxide from carbon and oxygen is measured to have an enthalpy change of minus 110 kilojoules. We know that carbon dioxide is able to be formed from the reaction between carbon monoxide and oxygen. That's demonstrated by this equation here. However, we may also be unsure about what the enthalpy change for this equation is going to be. Well, the way that would work it out is that it must be equal to the difference in the enthalpy for formation values for carbon monoxide which is the reactant in this equation, and carbon dioxide, which is the product of this reaction. As a result, the delta H is equal to the enthalpy of the products, which is highlighted by this equation here, minus 395 kilojoules, and the minus delta HF of the reactants, which is going to be the negative, indicated here, of the enthalpy of formation of reactants, which is minus 110 kilojoules. That is therefore going to give us a value of minus 285 kilojoules. In this diagram, we can visualize how the enthalpy change is equal to the difference in the enthalpy of formation value between the products, which are carbon dioxide, and the reactants, which are carbon monoxide. And delta H equals to delta HF of products minus the delta HF of the reactants. Previously, we introduced Hess's law. Hess's law stated that the total enthalpy change of a chemical reaction is the same regardless of the pathway taken, provided the initial and final conditions are the same. This illustrates what was demonstrated previously in our energy cycle diagram. What we should notice at this point is that this statement that described Hess's law illustrates the same conclusion that was made regarding the enthalpy change formula and the energy cycle diagram that we looked at previously. So for example, the energy change between the reactants and the products of this reaction, which is described by delta H, is equal regardless of the pathway, whether it's via a two-step reaction as indicated by the combination of the blue arrow and the black arrow, or just in a single-step pathway as indicated by the red arrow. This is going to be true as well as long as the reaction conditions and the states are the same before and after the reaction. Hess's law is important for two reasons. First, it demonstrates how reactions abide by the law of conservation of energy. And secondly, it's important because it's used to calculate the MLP values when direct measurement is difficult. An example we can consider is our previous example with the formation of carbon dioxide from carbon and oxygen. So the energy cycle is demonstrated on this same page over here. In this reaction experimentally, it would be quite easy to measure the enthalpy change for the combustion of carbon into carbon dioxide as indicated by the red arrow, as well as the combustion of carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide which is indicated by the black arrow. However, it would be quite difficult to isolate the combustion of carbon into carbon monoxide as demonstrated by this first equation or the blue arrow. The reason for that is because carbon easily fully combusts into carbon dioxide once it has combusted and formed carbon monoxide. Because the enthalpy changes that are demonstrated by the black arrow as well as the red arrow 
would be more easily measured experimentally, we can therefore use Hess's law to calculate the enthalpy of formation of carbon monoxide, the blue arrow, using the enthalpy that was just measured from these two reactions. I just want to emphasize here that looking at the diagram, the one-step reaction and the two-step reactions must have the same enthalpy change because they both start with the same reactants and end with the same products, despite the difference in the number of steps. The formation of products from reactant can occur in either one step or in multiple steps. Consider the reaction occurring in three steps. In that case, there would be Ea1, which is an activation energy associated with an enthalpy change in the first step, Ea2, and delta H2 associated with the second step, and Ea3 and delta H3 associated with the third step. According to Hess's law, the sum of delta H1, 2, and 3 would simply be equal to a value called delta H. And that value would be the equivalent value if only one step had been taken to reach product from reactant. Please keep in mind that the activation energy does not necessarily equal to the sum of activation energies in the multiple steps. Only the enthalpy is equal to the sum of enthalpies of each individual step. Enthalpy change, delta H, of the following reactions are shown. Carbon reacts with oxygen to form carbon monoxide, and its delta H is given as minus 111 kilojoules per mole. Carbon monoxide reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide. Its enthalpy change is given as minus 282 kilojoules per mole. Calculate the delta H for the following chemical reaction, where carbon reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide. To go through this example, we can consider how we could calculate the answer using two different methods. Thinking about it in terms of the enthalpy change equation, then thinking about it using Hess's law, and calculating using simultaneous equations. First, let's have a closer look at what is happening in our equations. The example illustrated by the first equation, which we can label 1, shows the enthalpy of formation of carbon monoxide from carbon and oxygen. The second equation, which we can label as 2, is illustrating the formation of carbon dioxide after oxidation of carbon monoxide. Keep in mind again that the first equation demonstrated the formation of carbon monoxide, which was then utilized in the second equation to form carbon dioxide. Thus we can imagine equation 1 and equation 2 as two steps in a reaction pathway forming carbon monoxide from the reactants carbon and oxygen. The equation which we need to calculate the delta H for is a reaction forming carbon dioxide from carbon and oxygen. Notice that for equation 3, carbon and oxygen are the same reactants that were initially utilized in the equation number 1, and carbon dioxide is the product that is formed from the reaction between carbon monoxide and oxygen in equation 2. Thus we can also imagine that equation 3 is the one-step reaction pathway of the formation of carbon dioxide from carbon and oxygen. Recapping our enthalpy change equation, delta H is equal to the delta HF of products minus the delta HF of the reactants. We know that in equation 2 we have carbon dioxide which is the product and we are trying to find the enthalpy of formation for that product, and we have carbon monoxide, which is a reactant, and we have the enthalpy of formation of that reactant. Therefore, if we treat delta H2 as a delta H, minus 282 kilojoules per mole is equal to the delta HF of products minus the delta HF of reactants, which is minus 111. From here, we can move this minus minus 111 which is plus 111, to the other side to make delta HF our subject. Rearranging our equation, we got that delta HF of the products is equal to minus 393 kilojoules per mole. However, we are not finished yet because this final delta H value provides us the enthalpy of formation of products for each one mole of carbon dioxide. In equation 3, there are two moles of carbon dioxide being produced from its constituent elements in standard form, so we would need to take this number and multiply it by 2. And that gives us a value of minus 786 kilojoules. This is the first method we can utilize to answer this question. 
The second method of calculating is by considering Hess's law. Because the delta H is unchanged regardless of pathway, we can calculate the enthalpy change using simultaneous equations. Thus for the formation of two moles of carbon dioxide from carbon and oxygen, we know that we will first need to create two moles of carbon monoxide and then form two moles of carbon dioxide from that. So first multiplying equation 1 by 2, we'll get the equation 2C solid plus 1O2 gas forms 2CO gas. The delta H of this equation would be equal to minus 222 kilojoules. We also need 2 times this equation number 2. That would give us 2CO gas plus O2 gas forming 2CO2 gas. And the delta H of this equation would be equal to minus 2A2 times 2 which is minus 564 kilojoules. If we call this equation 3, and we call this equation 4, then adding equation 3 and 4, we'll get the reactants 2C plus O2 from equation 3, then from equation 4, plus 2CO plus O2, forming our first product, 2CO, plus 2CO2, and the delta H would be equal to minus 222 minus 564 would equal minus 786 kilojoules. To check and see if this is correct, we can look at all of the species that are in the equation. Since the carbon monoxide are present on both sides of the equation, these cancel out. Next, we have two oxygens on the reacting side, so we can cancel one of them out and add a 2 in front to make our final equation 2C plus 2O2 forms 2CO2. And the delta H is equal to minus 786 kilojoules. Notice that our equation that we have formed after adding equation 3 and 4 is exactly the same as our final equation. Now we can do this calculation using Hess's law. Again, we label the equations 1, 2, and 3. In equation 3, we want solid sulfur at the end, and we know that solid sulfur is also exclusive to reaction 1 and 3. This indicates that for us to get our final answer, we need to somehow manipulate equation 1 to do so. To get the sulfur and the oxygen on the reacting side, we would need to flip the equation back to front. We can also label this equation 4. Equation 2 has 2 moles of SO3, but we only want to have 1 mole in our final equation. So we would have to divide equation 2 by 2. That would therefore equal to SO2 plus a half O2 forming SO3. And we can call this delta H5. Our final equation would therefore be half of equation 2, which is 5, plus 4. That would give us sulfur as a solid, plus oxygen gas, plus sulfur dioxide gas, plus half an oxygen gas, which would then form SO2 gas and SO3 gas. The SO2s then cancel out, and the O2s add together to give us 3 on 2 O2. That resembles our final equation, which is S solid plus 3 on 2 O2, forming SO3 gas. And so delta H equals to minus 297 minus 99.5, which equals to 397 kilojoules. And that is given as three significant figures. The enthalpy change delta H of the following reactions are shown. Oxygen breaks down into two oxygen atoms. Ozone is converted into oxygen. Nitrogen monoxide reacts with ozone to form nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. Calculate the delta H of the following equation, where nitrogen monoxide reacts with oxygen to form nitrogen dioxide. This example incorporates skills from both the first and second examples. We will have to add equations together like we did in the first example, 
and also reverse an equation like in the second example. Because the sequence of chemical reactions that occur in this question is not clear, we should calculate this question by considering Hess's law. First notice that the reactant NO is only in equations 3 and equation 4. Since in equation 3 it's on the reactant side already in the correct ratio, we do not need to manipulate the equation when we add equations together. Oxygen is also exclusive in the form of an atom in equation 1. However, there are two oxygen atoms in equation 1, but we only want to have one in equation 4. Furthermore, the oxygen is on the product side of the equation, while in equation 4 it is on the reactant side. This means that we'll need to flip and half equation 1. So that means oxygen will then form half an oxygen atom, and the delta H of this is going to equal to a half of this number and the negative of that. That will therefore equal minus 297.5 kilojoules. And we can call this equation 5. So first, we can add equation 3 and equation 5. What we'll get is O as well as NO as well as O3. And on the other side, we will have half an O2 plus NO2 plus O2. Now we can add the oxygens together to get 3 on 2O2 and NO2. We can call this equation equation 6. The delta H of equation 6 is going to equal to minus 199 plus minus 297.5 and that will equal to minus 396.5 kilojoules. Finally we want to look at equation 4 and see what is different about equation 4 and equation 6. So the only difference between equation 4 and 6 is the fact that there is this O3 and this O2. Luckily, both of these are found in equation 2. In fact, equation 2 has exactly double the amount of O3 and O2 that we want. This means that we'll need to halve equation 2. Giving us a new equation 7. And so 4 would be equal to 6 minus 7. The delta H would be equal to minus 396.5 minus negative 213.5, which would be equal to minus 183 kilojoules. First, 2NO is on the product side of equation 2, whereas NO is on the reactant side of equation 3. We should first half equation 2 and also reverse it to make the NO on the reactant side of the equation. So reversing and halving, we get NO is going to form half N2 gas plus a half O2 gas. And the delta H will be equal to the negative, since it's been reversed, and the half, 90.5 kilojoules. Carbon monoxide exists in both equation 3 and equation 1. Since they're in the same ratio, we do not need to manipulate equation 1. So then adding equations 1 with equation 4, will give us CO gas plus half O2 gas plus, from equation 4, NO gas, which will therefore give us CO2 plus a half N2 gas plus a half O2 gas. So both half O2s we can then subtract, which will equal our equation 3. The delta H will equal to minus 283 and then plus 4, which is minus 90.5, which equals to minus 374 kilojoules. And that is the three significant figures. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.